Well, welcome. This is our final opportunity to assess voting intentions of Canadians before the federal election on Monday. And political pollster Andrew Enns, Executive Vice President with Leger, is back for a final look at the national numbers. Welcome, Andrew. Good to be back, uh, Harold. This is, yeah, this is our last dance, I guess, before uh, before we got to get ready for the show. <laughs> yeah, crazy busy for you guys. So where where do we stand now with your, your new poll numbers? So, so we're our Leger just came out uh, with uh, with sort of our last polling uh, before before election day, and um, well, to use another sports analogy, uh, Harold, I know I've used a few, but uh, we've got the two main contenders at the center of the ring, and neither of them pr- are, appear prepared to give up any ground. Uh, the, the Conservatives are, are are you know slightly ahead, 33 percent, followed by the Liberals at 32 percent. A statistical tie in uh you know in 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 real in reality terms and uh and we've got the ndp at 19 percent they've they've held in tight uh, they're down slightly from 20 but really still still holding their uh, their support at that number and uh, the greens are pulling up at three percent and uh that upstart um that upstart uh, people's uh people's party of canada um, are uh, are in there at six percent in our last poll, which is up slightly from uh, a week ago. They were a five percent. So, so they're uh, so there's a, they're they're a factor out there. But really, the the two main uh, main parties are really locked in a in a in a real uh, real struggle here. And I know these are national numbers, and there's a um, a small BC breakout, albeit with right. a larger margin of error. But it seems to show what you told us earlier in the week. It's still very much a three way race in BC. British Columbia, yeah, as we as we talked about uh, in our last time together, it's it's a it's a three way race. We're still showing that the Conservatives look like they've they've uh, they've had a good last week in in British Columbia, uh, okay. you know, up a little bit in terms of their vote, but really uh, statistically still very uh, very close. And I think you see that um, you know where where we'll see BC on election night is really going to be some really interesting races in that uh, lower mainland. I think we'll see quite a few given the the, the way the ballot numbers are shaking out. The Ontario numbers, again, you're seeing a, a dead heat between the Liberals and the Tories, but the NDP are a little further back. The NDP are a bit further back. Um, yeah, it is interesting. Uh, the, you know, the Liberals and the Tories so close, what that's not necessarily showing you is that in 2019, the Liberals actually polled 42%. So the Liberals will be a little bit concerned about where they are currently in Ontario at at, uh, at 38%, I think we've got them at. So they're down... They're down about four points, and the, and the um, Conservatives are sort of holding their vote in Ontario. Um, so, I, you know, I, I do think that, and then the NDP at 18%, uh, they're up slightly from where they were uh, provincially in Ontario in 2019. Okay. That combination of a, of a little bit of Liberal vote being down and a little bit of NDP vote being up might be a bit of a, a, a concern in terms of splits, but... Um, you know, I think we've just got a night of some very close election races that we're going to be keeping track of. Hmm. One of the things you asked in this this new poll um, was whether people agree that this has been a more divisive and confrontational election than than previous campaigns. Um, and most people seem to agree. Is that recency bias or do you think, you know, that, that it's reflected in what we've seen out there? Well, you know, and it's uh, it's interesting. I actually talked to somebody else about that today, trying to sort of figure out. You know, I mean, we asked them a, a few interesting questions in our last poll, just about how Canadians look back at this campaign. And and honestly, I think uh, I'll definitely want to re-ask them in our next uh, election opportunity, right. just to get a sense of that. I don't unfortunately have any, but you know, I was looking back, thinking to myself of the of the campaign in 2015, for example, and you know. It, there was a much more, you know, certainly with with Mr. Trudeau bursting onto the scene, there was, there seemed to be a much more positive sort of vibe and feeling to that campaign, and and the advertising was a bit more, you know, positive and, and a bit more uplifting, certainly from that party. And and I know the you know the conservatives were a bit more aggressive in terms of some of the attack ads. Um, you know, I'd venture to say I think you know Canadians would have looked back at that. At least those of those Canadians supporting the Liberal Party would say it was fairly positive campaign that was being run. When we look at the results to this campaign, it's across the board, across the demographic, almost that it's been a fairly negative campaign. Seventy percent plus basically agreeing with the statement that this has been a, a divisive campaign. Even Liberals. Uh, NDPers and Conservatives, like there's no the only the Green Party is a bit more uh, 
uh, you know, charitable in terms of how things have been have been conducted. So it's, uh, you know, I say that, um, you know, people won't, people will probably be somewhat happy that the campaign's done. Um, I'm not sure if they'll be overly satisfied with the result, but, uh, you know, I think it's one that they'll want to put behind them. So here we are, kind of final couple of days of the campaign. In your experience, can much really change now? Well, certainly, you know, the last weekend uh, of the campaign can be very, uh, can make uh, make for some interesting change, depending on on whether or not there's any sort of trend or momentum uh, late in the late in the campaign that uh, that seems that appears to be breaking. I recall back in 2011, I was doing some polling work and saw some uh, saw some movement uh, with one of the parties back then, and and you know, that was late before the, 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 the Thanksgiving weekend. And, and we saw coming out of that some significant, uh, you know, change in the numbers. I don't see that in this campaign, Harold. I have to say that uh, these numbers have been very stable for the past couple of weeks. Um, you know, I've been looking for, uh, uh, you know, either increases in one or one of the other front runners to sort of maybe show an indication or quite frankly, even some some real significant drops in vote for say the NDP, which might be an indication that their their move their ballot is is becoming looser and, and potentially going to move around to other parties. Haven't seen much of uh, of any of that, and so I would say that uh, that uh, if there's going to be some big surprises on election day, it's probably going to be through the parties get out the vote efforts and getting their their, their vote to the ballot box. I think that's mm-hmm. where there's still room for. For a few surprises in in some uh, some areas. Yeah, it's just looking back at how your polling has tracked it since tracked since the start of the election. It does look like there was a slight downturn for the Liberals, and then they came back up, and sort of the opposite yeah. for the Tories. They they yeah. uh, came up and then kind of got went down a little bit. So. Yeah. And they're yeah, all back to where they were, kind of. You know, <laughs> you know, I looked at that too. We started this campaign. Uh, you know, the Liberals had a had a five point lead going into it, and within two weeks, the Tories suddenly had a four point lead. You know, but thirty five to thirty at the start, and then it was thirty four thirty for the Tories. You know, going into kind of the end of August, and uh, but by uh, you know by the week after Labor Day, we were we were locked in at uh, you know 33, 33, and and we've stayed really much statistically tied and and uh, you know there now that hides some movement between some of the other parties you know the PPC has made some yeah. noise and and uh, and there'll be something to watch for on election night and and uh, you know that NDP vote was up at 24 percent at one point but it hasn't dropped to where some some commentators thought it might really uh, you know bottom you know they pulled 16 percent in 2019 so the fact that they're close to 20 is probably, uh, you know, something that Jagmeet Singh will want to try to uh, deliver to the ballot box. On yeah, definitely one. a credit to him. I mean, he's always, he's showing up again and again in your polling as being a very popular leader in that regard, or at least yep. a somewhat trusted leader. Um, and that sort of brings us to this vote split question, because again, you've been polling around second choices, and we've seen a lot of that through the campaign. And there are some environmental groups and labor groups in particular that are urging people to vote strategically uh, to keep a Tory out in different ridings, either vote for the Liberal or the New Democrat, and some very active campaigns. Yeah, can that be a factor? Like, in, has it been a factor before? Well, certainly, strategic voting has been a factor. 2015. I mean, there was an organization that was devoted to uh, to sort of helping people vote strategically. Lead, I think, it was called Lead Now or or Lead Canada. Uh, we certainly haven't seen anything that organized in this uh, in this election. Uh, I, I, I definitely saw Mr. Trudeau uh, up his messaging with respect to, uh, you know, a vote for the NDP, uh, you know, will re- will elect a conservative government. So you need to, you know, vote strategically, vote for a liberal, even though, uh, you know, um, you know, we'll do the same things, those kind of messages. Um, you know, I'm not sure how effective and how active strategic voting will be. Again, haven't seen evidence of that kind of movement in our in our national polling or any of the other national polling that uh, that I've that I've had a look at. Um, I think that I think part of the issue is that you know the conservatives actually don't look like a real threat to form government. Um, you know, and that's that's something that you almost need 
to um, to sort of instigate some of that and motivate those strategic voters. They have to be able to sort of feel that there is a, a, a real threat of a conservative government. And in the polling numbers at, uh, you know, at, at basically tied neck and neck, and quite frankly, a lot of political commentators are still suggesting with those results that a liberal minority might be more likely than a conservative one just because of their, their efficiency of vote. So, so I think that that's giving you know, Jagmeet Singh, the opportunity to push back on that, and and Yves Blanchette, another one where the Liberals try to get his ballot strategically, to push back a little to say, you know, hold on, we actually think in a minority government, it's more, it's better for, it's better for us, better for Quebec, better for NDP progressive voters to have more, more seats, that therefore they have more leverage. And so I think, um, I think it's, uh, you know, you never know till till it's done. But I I do think it's a little more challenging for you know the true you know Mr. Trudeau to appeal to strategic voters to vote liberal and and uh, and uh, you know to to defeat a conservative uh, you know candidate. Right, and there's certainly there's a a substantial segment of the population these days who seem to be quite happy with minority governments just to keep somebody whoever wins in check some ways. So you have that perhaps playing into it as well. Um, <laughs> I, I know it's. Uh, it's sort of difficult, as you say, minority, majority, who might win. So we're not going to get you to look at seat projections because that's not your your area. Um, but when you do look across the country um, and uh, and see how things are breaking, what's the likelihood, do you think, that the rest of Canada is going to have to wait for the votes to be counted in B.C. this time before we know who will form government? Well, I, you know, I think there, you know, there's a better chance this election than probably in previous elections, I would say, uh, you know, Harold, I think I think that um, what you'll see quite early is I think networks will probably jump and, and you know, say that, uh, you know, we can be looking at a minority government, but they'll probably stop there and okay. then they'll pause and wait to see what, uh, you know, what party might be more, more likely to form that government. Um, you know, obviously, Ontario is, is really critical to uh, to how things unfold. But but if the Conservatives do a little better in Ontario, then then maybe, um, you know, what certainly maybe what even I am I'm anticipating and, and maybe what uh, what some of the, you know, the commentators. And, and so things electorally seat wise are closer between Liberals and ND and Liberals and Conservatives coming out of on, you know, and, and it won't be equal. But then, you know, the you'll factor in a, a, a large number of seats from Western Canada as yeah. kind of automatics into that conservative. You do that math and you say, boy, if they're pretty close, we may need to see some some returns in in uh, in Vancouver uh, before before calling who actually is going to have that um, that first right to form government in Canada. So. So, yeah, I think it is going to be uh, I think it'll be kind of fun for uh, for folks uh, in British Columbia to be a, uh, you know, maybe like a real, uh, you know, kind of almost kingmakers to some degree. Uh, there's that right. potential right. there. And uh, and nothing else. You're going to force a bunch of those folks in Ontario to stay up pretty late. Yeah. Now, if there is a change in government or a majority, then that'll be obviously the big story. If it's status quo, another another liberal uh, minority, um, still big news. But another story perhaps out of this campaign will be the collapse of the federal green party um yeah they're not showing up if, if it if it comes to pass what you're seeing in the polls they're not showing up very well even in bc where they should be strong no it's um you know i guess on one hand i'm not sure it'll be news because their their internal problems were so documented in the right. media that uh you know i think for for those following kind of the election side would go off oh, this is what you get um, you know, it's it's it will be um, it will likely be a tough night for the Green Party. I uh, looking at those Ontario numbers, I'm not hopeful that uh, you know Miss Paul will will be able to win her seat in Toronto Centre, and and that then probably means a um, a you know a leadership a leadership uh, contest for the Greens. And I do think that they'll they're they're not going to disappear. The, the the environmental issue is not going to disappear. It's it's going to it's with us. Climate change and and uh, but I do think it's uh, there's probably going to be a period of of some uh, some rougher times. And unfortunately for the Green Party, they won't have a lot of time to get organized for the next election. Probably. <laughs> and then on the at the other end of the scale, literally, you have the People's Party, which seems to have. Yeah benefited from presumably the mandatory mask protests and right. anti-vax protests, et cetera. So 
I guess time will tell whether this is just a one-off because of the pandemic related issues or whether Bernier gets momentum coming out of this campaign. He's not going to get any seats, but does he get momentum? Well, you know, I mean, certainly he'll, uh, you know, he'll, he'll claim some. I think it's, uh, um, I think it's interesting in terms of, uh, you know, hopefully a post pandemic, um, you know, what's the issue and what's the, uh, you know, what are the issues that galvanize the, uh, the people's, uh, you know, party of Canada and, and uh, we'll have to see, but certainly, uh, you know, there is basically a couple of, um, you know, sort of third parties are kind of, uh, you know, passing in the night, so to speak, in terms of their trajectories right now. And, and uh, both will provide some uh, some interest and some entertainment, no doubt, to watch as, as uh, we go into the post-election period. Great. All right. Well, thanks as always, Andrew. Get some sleep, please. And, and it'll be a long night for you on Monday. And Absolutely. then uh, you'll be back with us on, on Tuesday to, uh, well, to talk about the results. Look forward to I- that. I think we'll do a little uh, postmortem and just see what, uh, you know, where things worked in terms of the polling and also where things might, uh, you know, how things shape up for us uh, in terms of government and going forward. Right. If we have a result. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Take care. Bye for now.